alone in the garden. Oh, there's Miss Jill. But she already told me she isn't going to say anything. So, you know, I don't really like to talk very much, but I guess I will. Tonight, we have a really cool story for you all. I told you it's that George Washington Garber thing. So good, love him. And so he was really into gardens. So we thought we'd come and film it out here in the library garden, which is maintained by the Shaler Garden Club, which is pretty cool. You can see one of the most interesting, unique plants that we have out here. And we have a few of them. I'm just gonna, I'll just point it out to you. Are these sign plants and they're interesting. And it's, it's in, what's interesting about the sign plants is they grow and adapt to whatever language is most common in the area in which they grow. You can see this sign says Spike Speedwell, and it grew that way. That's missing. That's not true. It's not true. The but signs sure tell you what the plant is. Aren't they pretty? Yeah. This is a lovely garden. It is really nice. Yeah. It's really nice. That's the oak leaf hydrangea. There. This is just beautiful. Thank you, Shaler Garden Club. Yeah, they're cool. This is beautiful. That is not a sign plant. It's a whatever. sign plant, and there's another one cropping over there. A still bee. I think they need to stick with stories, Missing. There's another one. Look, they're cropping up everywhere. Missing. They're growing like weeds. Little dreamers, big dreamers. Big little dreamers, medium sized dreamers. Hello, it is evening once again. It's not really. It's afternoon. Remember yesterday we read the book about Aretha Franklin and I said I didn't know which book I wanted to do. It was either Aretha Franklin or George Washington Carver and then I was like no way Miss Jill's working tomorrow and she loves George Washington Carver. We both are huge George Washington Carver fans even before we even knew each other. So we're reading this book together kind of. This is the book The Secret Garden of George Washington Carver written by Jean Beretta and illustrated by Frank Morrison. And you might be thinking Who's George Washington Carver? Or you might be in love with George Washington Carver, just like we are. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna read kind of the introduction. And then, Miss Jill is gonna take you back to Missouri in, to 1862, or maybe 1864. I can't remember exactly. But we are actually beginning in Washington, D.C. in 1921. George Washington Carver addresses the U.S. Congress. We are just beginning to learn the value of the peanut, Carver told the congressman. Some of them laughed. One man made a racist remark. As a black man speaking into a room of all white representatives, Carver was not among friends. African Americans were still segregated by U.S. federal law and treated as second-class citizens. Carver had been given only 10 minutes to speak. He gave the audience 10 minutes they would never forget. Carver showed them how peanuts could be used to make dozens of items, including face cream, soups, ink, cheese, instant coffee, paper, paints, glue, and much more. When his time was up, they were impressed. The chairman encouraged him to continue. Uh, go ahead, brother, your time is unlimited. Carver spoke for over an hour. From the time he was a boy, he had a deep desire to share what he knew. So why then did he once have a secret garden? Miss Jill's gonna tell you. Diamond Grove, Missouri, 1874. No one knew about the garden George kept hidden on the Carver farm, and no one saw how the child cared for his flowers and how much he loved them. When he watered the clovers, their petals curved up like a smile, and the black-eyed Susans winked when he patted the soil around their roots. He sang to the dandelions, and they waved to him with their long leaves. I'll just hold that up again. People used to tell him that growing flowers was a foolish waste of time. 
Why don't you grow something you can eat? Neighbor said. You can't make any money selling flowers, said his brother James. They're only good for attracting bees. Don't let your flowers take away from your chores, warned Moses and Susan Carver. George was born in 1864, and like his mother and his brother, he was enslaved on the Carver farm. While still a baby, George and his mother were kidnapped. Days later, he was found close to death and brought back to the Carvers, and his mother was never seen again. The next year, slavery was outlawed in the United States. Here's that picture. Moses and Susan Carver did not have children of their own and raised George and his brother on the farm. George was a sickly child, which meant less time working and more time exploring. He filled the house with a steady stream of interesting plants and rocks. Susan taught him how to be creative with the little they had and nothing was wasted. Turkey feathers were used to make sewing needles and they made dyes from nuts and berries and they used plants and leaves for medicine. Every day he ran into the woods to discover something new. I want to know the name of every stone and flower and insect and bird and beast, he said. Education was limited at home. George had only one book, which he read a dozen times. I know this book by heart, he told Susan. I wish I could go to school with the white children. So there's that one book. Slavery had ended, but U.S. segregation law still denied black people the same rights as whites. George decided to create his own classroom in the woods and studied the subject he loved most, nature. And no matter how much people discouraged him, he wanted to grow flowers. George decided that to, to grow them in a secret garden so no one could find out or tease him, and it became a magical place for him. Tiny seeds went into the dirt and transformed into beautiful flowers, and in his mind, the garden was a true gift from God, whom he called the Great Creator. And each day, George rolled, rolled the soil between his fingers to make sure it wasn't too wet or too dry. Some plants needed more rain, and some needed more sun. here. You need a haircut, George says, as, said as he created a daisy in his hand and clipped off its dry petals. He spread them around the soil to help the flowers grow. At first, the gardening was difficult because he couldn't ask for help and reveal his secret. The more he experimented, the more he learned. George studied each new season by painting the life cycles of flowers. Berries were used to make paints and twigs and grass were used to make brushes. He learned how to protect the roots through the winter so his flowers could be reborn in the spring. Welcome back, he whispered to the tiny sprouts. It was a special garden and could have remained a secret forever, but eventually the young boy's generosity changed that. When George met a neighbor with a sick plant or flower, he offered to care for it. Part of his garden became part of a, became a plant hospital. Wilting plants went in and blooming plants came out. No one could believe that such a small child had so many big ideas. Here comes the plant doctor, they'd say whenever he paid a visit. Think of all the people I can help, he told the garden. 
It inspired him to see their flowers growing side by side with his flowers. George breathed a sigh of relief. There's no need to be a secret anymore. And then this ink's gonna come back and pick off with his next adventure. When we last left George Washington Carver, he was knowing that he had to get on the road. I'm just so excited about George Washington Carver. Okay. George knew that there was much to see and learn away from the farm. At the age of 12, he said goodbye to his garden and set off for a new adventure. In Neosho, Missouri, he lived with Mariah Watkins, who gave him advice he carried into adulthood. Learn all you can, George, then give it all back to our people. Over the next 18 years, he lived in several states and attended many schools to study art and agriculture. It was not easy. After being accepted to Highland College in 1885, the all-white school refused to admit him when they learned that he was African American. But the young man was determined to get an education. In 1896, George Washington Carver became the first black man to study at, graduate from, and teach at Iowa Agricultural College. That same year, Booker T. Washington, president of the Tuskegee Institute, hired to him to teach agriculture. When Carter first arrived, he said, everything looked hungry. The land, the cotton, the cattle, the people. Farmers were in trouble. Cotton crops were destroying their land. With little money and second-rate equipment, Carver built Tuskegee's first farming laboratory. He experimented with new crops to replace cotton, like sweet potatoes and soybeans, but the peanut was his champion. It had nutrients to nourish and refresh the soil. He convinced farmers to grow peanuts and then develop over and then developed over 300 uses for them. It wasn't long before peanuts became the largest crop in the South. Carver also traveled, created a traveling schoolhouse called the Jessup Agricultural Wagon to visit poor farmers. It offered everything from tool demonstrations to medical care to pamphlets on how to improve farms and live healthier. In its first summer, the wagon visited over 600 people. Carver's advice saved countless farms and families. What would you like to learn today? He asked a farmer. The best time to plow or how to raise a strong cow. Wherever he traveled and whenever he traveled, people went to hear him speak. After his historic day in front of the US Congress, he became a living folk hero. He was also recognized as an early environmentalist, a voice for racial harmony, and an advisor to world leaders. With his new fame came many awards and honors, yet he remained a humble man, always ready to serve humanity. Since the days on the Carver farm, one thing never changed. Day after day, I spent in the woods alone in order to collect my floral beauties and put them in my little garden I had hidden in the brush not far from the house. Regard nature, revere nature, and respect nature. And that is this book that just out came out this year, The Secret Garden of George Washington Carver. My friends, Thank you for listening tonight. Do me a favor. Give your kiss, beautiful brain. Kiss your loving heart. And look in a mirror. And before you go to sleep, say, hey, good looking. Because you're all good looking, just the way you are.